One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, check, check, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Check, 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 check.
Before we, before we get started, just uh, reminders. Same as yesterday, please silence your cell phones, no flash photography, or live transmission or streaming of these press conferences is uh, allowed. Uh, satellite coordinates for these press conferences are on sheets of paper that are located throughout this room. Uh, please raise your hand when you uh, want to ask a question and a microphone holder will come to you uh, to alert them. And uh, I think we'll be ready here in just a second. And the Loyola rock locker room is open at this time. We'll get started first with uh, opening statement from uh, Coach Moser, if you would. Wow, you just got to give so much. First of all, the, the glory goes to God for the, the resilience this group has and for how much he's blessed our university and how much he's blessed the, these guys and blessed me to coach high character guys. So um, for sure, that's the first uh, thing to say. The second is uh, this hats off to Nevada. I mean, they are a resilient bunch. I mean, they wouldn't quit. That last three, you know, um, it just, they, just, they just keep coming. And then the third thing is how proud I am of these guys. They don't quit. They're resilient. It's different guys, different nights. Um, you saw Dante make a shot, then Clay make a shot, and then Andre and Marcus down the stretch with the free throws with the big three, with Marcus with the big three. It's, it's been this way all year long. The unselfishness, you heard them say the first two games, it could have been any one of us. And they believe it, and I'm so proud of these guys. We'll open it up for questions. Uh, please, if you, if you would, just direct your question to a specific individual as much as possible. Just raise your hand and, all right, front row here on the left. First, Coach, congratulations. Thank you. The team started off 13 for 13 in the second half, but yet still the game was tied. Talk about the resiliency and the confidence in your team. We, we started out 13 for 13? Um, you know, I know we were getting a lot in transition. We were really trying to get, you know, we started, we went small. We started Andre uh, the second half and uh, defensively, um, you know, Crut was a, it was a tough matchup for him. Um, and uh, so I thought, we, we, I thought we'd go small and really push the tempo. Um, it was a great suggestion by, by my assistant, Brian Mullins. He was there, we were, you know, we haven't done that all year. We've started Crutwick every half. And Brian said, you know, let's, what about starting Andre? Um, because they're going to go right at, you know, uh, Crud had two fouls, and they were going to go right at him um, to start the half because they had the ball. So we went with it, and, and it really paid off on terms of the tempo that we uh, created getting stops. Our defense created the offense for sure. Fourth row, or fourth row. Uh, Tucker Tool, Maroon Tiger Media Group. Coach, I know Marcus was a little, a little quiet in those first two games. Can you give us your thoughts on his big performance tonight? You know, I, did, I didn't look at it as Marcus being quiet. I mean, Marcus, I mean, he was, he was a warrior. He made warrior plays that we see a lot on the tape. Um, and it just happened to be different guys, different nights. Um, so I, I don't think any one of our coaches looked at it and said they were quiet tonight. You know, like, like Ben didn't score much tonight, but Ben wasn't quiet. Ben was unbelievably, you know, did a lot for us. And we believe that. We believe just because you don't have a lot of points in your point column doesn't mean you're quiet or you had an off night. These guys believe it. They defend, they do different things that we call them intangible plays. And Mark has been making those all tournament. And because that mindset, he was ready to step in and, and do well today. And he was really, uh, you know, the guys knew it. And they were feeding off him because he was really going downhill um, against them. Back one row on the left. Henry Redman, Loyola Phoenix. Um, you guys went down early in the first half. What did you say in the timeout? Yeah, me? Yeah, it was pretty much verbatim in the first five minutes of the Tennessee timeout. Um, we just were, we just didn't come out defensively like we, we, we have. And it's almost the same script. They scored uh, 12 or 15 in the first five minutes and ended up, what, 24 for the half? And it just, just had to settle them down again. And then, then we got talking. I mean, we, we were, when we're noisy on defense, we're, we're really good. And we were just kind of, they, they had three or four back cuts that we, we were just kind of stuck in the mud. And, you know, I think after the first media timeout, we kind of, 
uh, regrouped, and then they, then they were playing from that on. They were loud, they were playing, they were aware, they were in the moment. Third row on the left. David Hawk, Chicago Tribune. Marcus, what will you remember about that, hitting that big shot? Um, I'll, just, I'll probably remember it for the rest of my life. I mean, uh, it doesn't really get any better than that. Um, Clay made a great play, he got downhill, uh, kicked me to the corner. Uh, the guy came flying at me. I just gave him a little shot fake, and I shot it, and it, it went in, and it was just, I mean, that's, that's something you dream about. You're, you're in the Sweet 16, and you hit a big shot like that. It just, I mean, it's just amazing. And I'm just blessed to be in that position. Let's go to the right here toward the back. Clayton, you and Ben uh, experienced a lot of success in high school together. Uh, have you all gotten a chance to take some time and reflect on uh, the, another postseason journey and, and sort of what this is like on top of that? Uh, yeah, I mean, me, me and Ben, have, have, I mean, we spend so much time together, uh, just like when we're just sitting in our apartment or in the hotel room, and we're, we're with the, each other all the time. And um, obviously during this stretch right now, um, whenever we're just sitting in our apartment, hanging out together, um, we'll, I mean, we'll look at each other and we'll just be like, wow, like, we're really doing this together right now. And um, I mean, we, we couldn't be happier um, to be doing this with each other. It's been a, it's been a dream come true for us. And um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want it to end with him. So we're going to do whatever we possibly can do to keep keep playing together. Just one follow, oh, yeah. one follow. Is Coach Fritz here with you to share it? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Coach Fritz was there. Uh, I didn't see him, but I know that uh, we, we got him a ticket for the game. So uh, I'm pretty sure he was at the game tonight, yeah. Uh, Middle so of the room. Coach, you said that um, being loud on defense was key. So for each three of you guys, um, if you had to name the loudest guy on your team on defense, especially during that, you held Nevada scoreless for the last eight minutes for the first half, in case you didn't know. Who was really making like the, the key uh, calls and, and the low most vocal? Clayton, uh, why don't you take that one? I'm sorry. I'm, Go ahead. Clayton, you can take me? that one. Yeah. I mean, all year, uh, it's, it's amazing, but our freshman, Cameron Crutwig, has always been, he's been the loudest guy for us all year. He, he talks so much. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know. I think, I think we were all kind of quiet to start the game. And uh, once we started talking, ben, Ben's the defensive player of the year in, in the conference. So I think he was really leading us out there tonight, especially since they had so many guards. Um, and it was, it was like tough for Crutwig. There, was, there were certain people it was tough for, for Crutwig to, to guard in the game. So um, I think Ben really led us out there on, on the defensive end tonight. Let's go to the left side over here. Uh, two things, Shannon Ryan, Chicago Tribune. Marcus, it looked like you banged your knee at the end there. How do you yeah. feel? Oh, no, I'm, I'm OK. I'm, like Coach said, I'm a warrior. <laughs> uh, no, no, it, it, it was a little shock, you know. Uh, you know, just one of those plays where it, it just stuns you real quick. But I, but I got back up. I'm fine now. <laughs> Even some of your most loyal followers um, had you guys bowing out at this point, or you know, thought, well, they've had a nice run. Um, but you can say Sister just, Jean. Okay. You know, I don't call <laughs> Everybody in the country, you can say it. But, um, but you know, I mean, not just with her. But did you? Was there some um, motivation or just something? inside you to think, you know, we're, we're not done yet, or that you wanted to silence people who thought, you know, this was kind of good enough for you guys? I mean, it was not really in terms of just silencing people. We knew what we, what we wanted to do, and we knew what our goal was. And I mean, we just, like I said before, we've just been doing this all year, just taking one game at a time. And um, we had much success in, in all year, uh, doing the same things that we've been doing. and. Um, you know, I'm sorry for Sister Jean for busting her bracket, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we're just we're just happy, you know, to be in this position and going to the lead eight. Third row here, Porter, uh, Nevada, with its reputation for coming back the last two weeks. What did you say during the timeouts to remind your team that okay, here they come again? Well, we just, well we, we were talking about being strong with the ball and watch the run and jump. They they they've made a lot of headway running and jumping, so we were ready to space the floor, circle, flash middle. So we kept on talking about that and wanting good possessions, being strong with the ball. But we were, it was about transition defense, too. And there were some that were bad, and there were some we got. You know, that they, they can, I mean, when you have a 6'7 point guard covering the ground, he can go rim to rim so fast. That was one of the reasons why I called timeout after Marcus shot so fast. Because they can, they can, he, can he can go coast to coast in like two strides, and then he, he just, he refuses to lose. He hits that pull up three, and you know, the, you know so. Um, we just, we just really wanted to, to watch the press, you know, to, to be strong with the ball because they, they run and jump. 
and have good possessions, defend and rebound. I mean, the same stuff we've talked about at the end of games all the time. We have a thing the last four minutes. We kind of put our, our four fingers up the last four minutes and, and uh, about playing this, this, the, that way. Smart, defend, rebound, take care of the ball. Back one row. Andre, in the first half, you kept you had a few shots blocked, and then end up with 15 points. Did oh, you kind of what happened time. in the uh, what happened at halftime? Uh, just the whole team was telling me use my shot fakes because they're jumping for everything. So uh, I should have got into it in the first half, but I didn't. And then in the second half, it started working, and then I just started making points. Back to Ken. Uh, Clay and Andre and Marcus all three. 59-59, 318 left. They had the timeout. Like, what was going through your mind at that time? Like, how much were you kind of aware of really what was at stake at that point? Marcus, why don't you start? We'll come back. Which timeout? The three eight, the last TV timeout, 318. Uh, it was yeah. tied 59 uh, 59. I mean, uh, I, like Coach said, you know, we, we have this thing where we put our four fingers up, and, and that, that just means uh, it's just time to lock in and, and try to get stops and uh, make plays on offense. And, uh, like, I, uh, like I've been saying all year, this, this team never quits. Uh, we're such a resilient team. Uh, uh, Nevada, you know, they're a great team as well. Uh, we respect them. And uh, they fought real, real hard. And they made that huge run at, the, uh, at that media timeout. And, uh, you know, we just uh, we got some stops. You know, we made some uh, big shots. You know, Dre and then I hit one. And uh, we were fortunate enough to get the W at the end of, at the, end of the game. Andre, why did you add to that? Uh, we practice situationals all the time. We practice being up late. We practice being down, tie scores. Just uh, one of the four-minute games that we work on. So we knew like, how to work it out. And that's what we did. Clayton. <laughs> they got it. They got it. They advanced. OK, that's fine. Uh, let's go to the back. Emily Gagnon, CBS 46 from here in Atlanta. Coach, this is for you. And maybe a player could answer as well. I don't care which one. Um, I'm just wondering, you guys have won in this tournament by a combined four points. Uh, that's pretty <laughs> unbelievable when you think about it. That saying, act like you've been here before, you guys haven't. But that's how you guys are acting. So I'm wondering, at what point in the season did you guys kind of realize, hey, we perform really well under pressure? You know, it's been, it's been a, a, a season-long journey with that, of believing that we can win. And um, these guys have found ways to win. We focus in on, we got, you know, in the, the process of the game, you know, and, and things we got to do in the game. But, you know, I, I, would, I, I would say, um, obviously, when you beat a team like Florida back earlier in the year and Clay went out and the, and the, and the way they guys rallied in the, in the locker room after, at halftime, knowing that Clay and to, to have that confidence. Anytime you get a win like that, it just, and then it just grows. I mean, you find ways to win games. They're, they're completely an unselfish group. I mean, they're just about not caring who gets it. Um, and that, that culture and that tightness is really uh, something. And then you find ways to believe. I mean, I'm telling you, when you got, we, it was by design, but we have seven of these guys won state championships, you know? And, you know, Andre took his junior college to the, the national championship in Hutchinson, Kansas. These other two won high school state championships. When you, when you have that winning gene, and I love that with these guys, they just keep believing, they keep believing, they keep buying in. And uh, so it's just grown, and we haven't thought about the total victory margin. We've just talked about put it in the bank, next one, we're hungry, we're greedy, we want more. That's all the time we have. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. All these guys will be available in the Loyola locker room as soon as they get back.
Let me just remind everybody to please identify yourselves before you ask a question. Uh, Coach Musselman, if you could just start with a couple of opening thoughts and then we'll go to questions. Yeah, I mean, first of all, we'd really like to, um, you know, congratulate Li Liola. I thought that uh, they played a fantastic game. Um, they're such a well-coached team. Uh, their players play so hard. They cut hard. They defend. Um, so we'd like to, you know, congratulate them on a, on a great game tonight. And uh, we wish them luck in, in, in the game on Saturday. Um, you know, and then from our perspective, I thought, we, pl you know, we played uh, like we have all year. We played our hearts out. Uh, came up a basket short or a point short. Um, it's obviously tough for our locker room right now to, you know, to know that our season's over and, you know, um, we get a stop on that three ball that they hit at the buzzer and, and maybe we're, you know, sitting up here with a win. But, um, but again, we, we, we didn't. And so we got we to tip our hat off to Loyola for sure. Let's go to questions. Raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. Over here on the left, third row. Ethan Joyce, Winston-Salem Journal. You know, you come back in your last two games. What, what made it so difficult against Loyola to, to do that again for a third time? Who, who's the question for? Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. I mean, I, I, we still came back. You know, we were, we were down at one point. Um, I think by 12, and we lost by one. Um, so we, we came back. I mean, you know, we had a good look in the corner uh, from Hallis Cook, who's one of our best shooters. We hit that, you know. Um, so we did come. I mean, we won the second half. We got the game sped up. We scored 44 points in the second half. It was just, you know, we lost a game by one point to a good team. Right side, fifth row. Uh, Ryan Schmel is ABC 36. What are you guys going to remember the most from this season? Who's the question? All of for? you. Uh, okay, let's start. Caleb, why don't you start? <clears throat> um, I mean, we'll just you know we we'll just remember all the work that we had put in, and you know, it, it's very it's something really really hard to do that people don't really realize that we've been doing you know with around six to seven people rotation and with without a true big. Um, and just how much preparation, you know, and behind the scenes stuff that we go through all the time to get to a place like this and then come up short, you know, uh, it's hard. But, um, you know, remember all the relationships and, you know, all the work and stuff that we put in and, you know, with the lack of depth, uh, it's been a special year. Jordan? Um, just the camaraderie, you know, the, the uh, chemistry we had as a team and uh, we had a great group of seniors that were always there and the work we put in the off season and, and until now it was just it was a, it's a lifetime experience coach you I, mean, I think we're that? all proud of um, you know representing our conference the right way and um, I'm just proud of how these guys never never quit and um, you know we lost tonight there's some things that um, you know, we could have probably done better. Um, but having said that, you know, in life, it's about how hard you, you know, whatever you're doing um, and how much enthusiasm you have for it and your effort level. And, and um, you know, and this team, this team played really, really hard all year. And that's what I'm the most proud of. Raise your hand if you have a question, Steve. Uh, Coach, uh, Steve Hummer from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. I don't know how many teams have you run into this season that, that played like that, played like Loyola did in the second half, making their first 13 shots and so efficient offensively. Um, what, uh, what did you see from your vantage point on that? I mean, they're, they're a really, really good offensive team. There's no doubt about it. And um, I mean, they couldn't miss. Having said that, we still outscored them by three in the second half. Um, they do a great job cutting. They do a great job with spacing. And that's why they're 31 and 5. Any more questions? Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Charles, third row. Uh, Coach Muscle, Muscleman already mentioned the, uh, the three-pointer at the buzzer and how, and how big that was. Can you guys talk about on the court you were so close to that? Uh, Shot clock running out. What did you see on that uh, on that shot by Towns? Caleb, you can start with that. Um, uh, I just think that we 
you know, a theme that we kept doing over the course of the game was over helping. Um, we were trying to force Custer and them, uh, you know, every time they drove to make tough twos. And I lost my man. I lost uh, Towns late in the game uh, for the kick out uh, right there because I was expecting him to backdoor cut that time like he did, I think, the possession or two before. And that time he spaced out more towards the wing that time. And um, I think I recovered pretty well. It's just, you know, I, I just, you know, should have denied the catch. But, um, yeah, it's one of those things I just got lost and, you know, it's it it costly. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, folks. Appreciate your time.